In this video, we will uh, derive an expression for the mutual inductance of two coaxial solenoids. First, you can take down this question so that you will be aware of what kind of question you may get in the exam. Deduce an expression. Deduce an expression for the mutual inductance. of two long coaxial solenoid two long coaxial solenoids having equal length having equal length but having different radii different radii and different number of turns deduce an expression for the mutual inductance of two long coaxial solenoids having equal length but having different radii and different number of turns now first question is what is coaxial coaxial i think you know the meaning coaxial means common axis so both the solenoids are placed in such a way that they have the common axis or their axis is same. So we will draw a figure to represent these two coaxial solenoids. Now important points to note here is they are coaxial solenoids and having equal length different radii and different number of turns so no other uh, quantities are given here we can all assume like uh, for example the first solenoid has n1 number of turns and has a radii radius of r1 etc so we'll assume each and every quantity and then we'll try to derive the mutual inductance so first let us say we have two solenoids with common axis so let me draw that one is of radii r1 the other one is radii uh, one is of radius r1 uh, the other one is of radius r2 let me say this is my first solenoid and let me say the radius is you know the radii of this is r uh, sorry not radii the radius is r1 for this okay consider another solenoid with a same axis so here i will draw you know just one line so that it represent the axis and now we will draw another solenoid let us say the radius of that solenoid is r2 and i'll assume r2 is greater than r1 it can be reversed also no problem and i will take the this red color to represent that solenoid just um, i just draw it once again sorry this is one solenoid and i'll draw another one like this of you know greater radius and 
and one is radius r2 the other one is r1 let us say the first one is so this is number one solenoid and this let us say this is number two two solenoids now numbered as one and two let the length of the solenoid as n that is they have equal length let we are passing a current i1 through any one of the solenoid i'll say i'm passing a current i1 through the first solenoid now we will write all these quantities whatever we have done till now or whatever we have assumed so let l is the length of solenoids length of solenoid 1 and 2 uh, because uh, they have equal lengths R1 and R2 are the radii of solenoid 1 and 2 respectively. Respectively, ok. So, let N1 is the number of turns. solenoid has one has a number of turns let solenoid one has n1 number of turns let solenoid two has n2 number of turns ok so now we have assumed all the quantities now when a current I1 is passed through solenoid 1 what happens a magnetic field is set up so we can write the magnetic field in solenoid 1 due to current I1 is magnetic field set up or magnetic field due to current I1 magnetic field due to current I1 in solenoid 1 is B1 is what is the formula B1 is mu naught into small n1 into I1 what is small n1 where small n1 is capital N1 by L that is number of turns per unit length this is by basic formula and this formula we have derived already in the previous chapter so B1 is mu naught N1 I1 and where n1 is n1 by l is the number of turns per unit length what is this number of turns per unit length now due to this current a magnetic field is set up and this magnetic field produces flux and that flux also links the second solenoid so we can find out what is the flux which is linking the second lux solenoid because we want to find out the mutual inductance that is flux in the second solenoid due to the flow of current in the first solenoid so we can write total flux linked with solenoid second solenoid solenoid 2 as 
phi 2 which is equal to b1 into a2 into number of turns in the second solenoid. Now we can substitute this b1 and n2 here. n2 is if you want you can write it as n2 into l or let it be n2 itself no problem. So, b1 is mu naught into n1 i1 n1 i1 into so a2 also you can write in terms of the radius phi r2 square into n2 so now phi r2 square into n2 next what is mutual inductance by definition by definition mutual inductance is given by sorry mutual inductance m as phi 2 by i 1 so, why did we find out phi 2? Because mutual inductance is phi 2 by i 1. Now, phi 2 we have substitute that divided by i 1 you can do. So, m is mu naught into n 1 i 1 into phi r 2 square into n 2 divided by i 1. So, this i 1 i 1 will get cancelled. So, we have the equation, we have equation for m as m is equal to mu naught into pi r2 square into n1 n2 or we can substitute n1 as n1 by l substitute n1 is equal to n1 by l what do we get m is equal to mu naught into phi this is just phi r2 square not pi square phi r2 square phi r2 square into n1 by l into n2 so this is a value for m m is mu naught pi r2 square into n1 n2 by l or you can write in terms of area also so this is one equation for m m is mu naught pi r2 square into n1 n2 by l or you can also write it as m as mu naught into a2 into n1 n2 by l one in terms of area and another one in terms of radius m is mu naught a2 into n1 n2 by l this is the required expression So, the required expression in this case you can write in terms of R2 because the radii is given. They have different radii like that or you can also write in terms of area. So, here we have substituted pi R2 square as A2. The mutual inductance or coefficient of mutual induction for two coaxial solenoid is given by mu naught into A2 into N1 N2 by L where L is the length of the solenoid. N is the number of turns in the first solenoid n2 is the number of turns in the second solenoid and a2 is the area of the second solenoid and I hope you understood this derivation.